This is going to be a short video about my VizPack material libraries for Modo. So the idea behind these libraries is to allow people to get really detailed and realistic materials with a minimum of hassle. Now in order to achieve this, I've done a lot of research into the reflective properties of various materials. And I've also taken great care to try and make textures that are as detailed and realistic as possible. So in order to demonstrate this, I've created this really simple scene, which at the moment is shaded with just basic materials loaded from Modo's default libraries that ship with the program. And what I'm going to do is do a test render, and then we'll apply some of the VizPack materials to the scene and compare the before and after. So I'm going to hit F8 on my keyboard and do a test render. And I'll just pause the video while it clears up because it's going to take a little while. And now that the render has cleared up, what I'm going to do is I'm going to save this image and then we'll return to the scene and apply some of the VizPack materials to it. So I'm going to start with this windowsill. So I'm going to click on the pink icon for VizPack architecture and I'm going to scroll down until I find my paints. And the paint I think I'm going to use is this paint thick semi glossy preset. So I'm just going to drag and drop that onto the windowsill in preview. Now, sometimes when you drag and drop presets in Modo, it doesn't always apply the texture maps correctly. So I'm going to open the material and I'm going to select my texture map and I'm going to make sure that the projection type is set to UV map and it's got the correct UV map selected. And I'm also going to make sure that I'm happy with the horizontal and vertical wrap. In this case, I think I'm going to stick with the default in the preset of six. Next, I'm going to look at the key. So this time I'm going to open VizPack products, go to the metal folder and I'll scroll down until I find steel scratched and I'll just drag and drop that onto the key. And once again, I'm going to expand the material, select all of the image maps and I'm going to make sure the projection type is set to UV map and I've got the correct UV map selected. Having done that, let's look at the tiling. So it seems a little bit sort of high for an object to this size. So what I'm going to do is just quickly go through and divide everything by two. So now I'm happy with the mapping. I'm just going to collapse this group and I'm going to right click on it and I'm going to duplicate it and copy it into the key mortise folder and then select it one more time, duplicate it one more time, just copy that into the keyring material as well. Now, even though I'm working with presets, I can of course still customize these materials so they fit with my own particular scene. So one thing I'd like to do is to add a logo to this key. So I'm going to select key material and I'm going to go to add layer, image map, load image, and I'm going to add this map as a bump map. So having imported the map, the first thing I'm going to check is that it's correctly projected as a UV map. And in this case it is. And because it's a bump map, I need to reduce the low value to minus 100. Now, often with bump maps, I untick the anti-aliasing, but because this is actually going to require a softish edge, I'm going to leave the anti-aliasing on. However, I am going to go into the material of my steel and I'm going to just change the bump amplitude to 30 UM. And with the keys taken care of, the next thing I'm going to look at are the sunglasses. So I'm going to open VizPack products once again. I'm going to go to the plastic this time and I'm going to go to black plastic semi mat and just drag that onto the frame of my glasses. And finally, let's look at the lenses of the glasses. So let's open VizPack products once again, and I'm going to go to glass. And this time I'll use the bottle green, just drag that onto the lenses in preview. And because these lenses are obviously very thin, what I'm going to do is just to ensure that the color shows up, I'm going to go to the transparency settings and just change the absorption distance to two millimeters. And with that done, I'm just going to quickly unpause this preview and have a look at things. So with this quick update to preview complete, I can see that things are starting to look more interesting already. Before launching a higher resolution render, there's just one small change I'd like to make, and that's to just add a little bit of grease onto the lenses of the glasses. Now in the black plastic preset, I've got this puffy clouds texture, which I'm using as a roughness map. 
So what I'm going to do is I'm going to steal this. I'm going to duplicate it. I'm going to copy it into the bottle green and I'll change the effect to refraction roughness. Now I don't want the refraction roughness to be very high. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set the upper value to be just 3%. So there's only a very small amount of refraction roughness. So there'll just be a hint of sort of greasy marks on the surface of the lens. So with that done, I'm going to hit F8 and I'm going to launch a higher resolution preview. And we'll pause the video while this is rendering. And with the render complete, you can see that we now have a much more detailed and interesting image than the one we started with. All of these materials are adding a lot of detail and realism to the scene. So you can see the paint that I've applied. It's got this really nice texture. If you look closely at the metal, you can see there's little scuff marks and scratches. And again, with the plastic, there's also some variation on the roughness of the surface. And there's also some variation on the refraction roughness of the glasses, which we've applied by duplicating the map that was in the plastic and applying it as a refraction roughness map. Now, if I quickly switch to bridge, we should be able to compare the before and after images. And you can see that by applying the materials from the VisPack libraries, we've definitely achieved much nicer render with a lot more detail and realism. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. and Thank you very much for taking the time to watch it.